Tomorrow marks 50 years since the assassination of Malcolm X. The charismatic and controversial leader was gunned down while giving a speech here in New York City. CBS N's Vladimir Dudier spoke with his family about a complicated legacy. Vlad, good morning. Good morning. Malcolm X was a minister, an orator, a revolutionary. But for Atala Shabazz, he was simply her father. Shabazz is the eldest of his six daughters, a child when he was killed. And she says that while America continues to search for guidance in Malcolm's words, she sees his vision playing out all around us. Harlem has always been a really classic um, town. Not Today, Atala Shabazz is a writer, and teacher, mentor, and her daughter still trying to clarify her father's place in history. We took a walk with her in his old neighborhood, on the street now named in his honor. So it's nice that Lennox is named after my dad. Oh, I'm sure he probably would be embarrassed. He would be very shy right? about it, yeah. That's a side of Malcolm X that only those closest to him knew. This is the Malcolm X Americans remember. And it is time for you and me to fight for ourselves. The controversial leader preaching equality by any means necessary. Your father's message, do you feel it's been misinterpreted over the years? Oh, sure. I understand people needing to hold on to the strength they associate to him. Mm. However, they do him a disservice, an injustice, when they excerpt him and redefine them in their way and not as he is. Here in Harlem, Malcolm was the voice of black frustration. Has integration solved the problem or made it worse? Angry over poverty, police brutality, and segregation. Critics labeled him a radical militant. Supporters said he was uncompromising in his mission. To lift the struggle for freedom of the Negro in this country from the level of civil rights to the level of human rights. That's what he told a young CBS reporter named Mike Wallace, who was in search of the true Malcolm X, of the message and the man. Wallace filed his first report in 1959. White people don't realize how frustrated Negroes have become. But they are also of the opinion that no good can possibly come from violence. If they are of that opinion, Mike, if you think that uh, the powder keg that's in your house is going to explode under certain conditions, either you have to remove the powder keg or remove the condition. His message was deeply tied to the circumstances of his own life. As a youth, his father's murder left him hardened and angry. At age 20, Malcolm went to prison for larceny. It was there he converted to a growing movement of black separatism, the Nation of Islam. If the government can't defend us, what should we do? If the government doesn't want us to pick up a rifle, then defend us. Go find out who bombed the church in, in Birmingham, Alabama. In his 30s, he went through yet another transformation. After a trip to Mecca in 1964, he publicly embraced working with anyone who was willing to work with him. You have changed your attitude about the white man in the United States to some extent. Well, I've broadened my scope. Travel broadens your scope. Uh, it gives you a wider understanding. He revealed all of this to Wallace, who throughout his life remained close to Malcolm's family. They were brethren, cared for each other off record, despite profession. Um, when they met, they realized that they had much more in common, and people publicly would never have imagined or presume so. When Malcolm broke away from the Nation of Islam, I wanted you to know that my house was bombed. It was bombed by the black Muslim movement. It earned him many enemies within the group. Are you not perhaps afraid of what might happen to you as a result of making these revelations? Oh, yes. I probably am a dead man already. Then suddenly it happened. On February 21st, 1965, three members from the Nation of Islam shot Malcolm while he was giving a speech in Upper Manhattan's Audubon Ballroom. From the second floor ballroom, the grim staccato of a dozen shots. He was just 39 years old. And there are few of us that get to call upon each other on these various dates and experience what we've inherited in terms of the radiance of our relatives' legacies and also the ache in, in their absence. While he predicted his own death, he could not have foreseen how his vision would play out or when America might see its first black president. Men and women who fought for our freedoms most certainly expected to see a black president. I think that it took 40 years is the crime. And so the question becomes not for those who have been marginalized, but for those who are in a position to do better, do more. What are we waiting on? These are the questions Shabazz never stopped asking. Do you still have conversations with your father? Oh, God, all the time. Look, you can't be that potent and then be gone. 
Mm. Wow. It, this relationship between Mike and, and Malcolm X was really amazing because Malcolm X, uh, Mike took him to a dinner with yeah. Edgar Bronfman, who was CEO of Sagram, then a leading uh, Jewish activist here in New York City, uh, showing Mike trying to bridge some of the misunderstandings. Awesome. Yeah, it was a great, and you know, one of the things she spoke about is the fact that you can either be a Malcolm, X, a Malcolm X fan or a Martin Luther King fan, but there's room for both. For both. I think it's good she's speaking out about her dad. Glad, thank you so much.